Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. It's Natasha Venter. She is here, and she's going to talk about her her lifely long career as a spiritualist. Now, before we begin, I want to just tell everybody about the my new book, Empower Yourself. I am right now on CoachStacyChalemi.com. We're giving away a free copy of this book. If you go on the uh, website, you'll find a link for it. It's, it's uh, CoachStacyChalemi.com slash free book, and you can receive a free copy of this book. Now, I'm very excited because Natasha has a lot to offer. She is not just a spiritualist, but she sees things in a different light. And she's going to explain a little about who she is and what she does and what her goals and purposes are. And then we, I, she just has a lot of, of insight about how to live life, our purpose, how to really become our ideal self. And she's going to express all this in her, our conversation. So Natasha, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Okay, so I am a multi-life intuitive. In other words, I remember being born. I remember the path of why my soul was here on this world. And when we're in this human experience, you know, we're all awakening into a new knowing. And so with that, that my consciousness of my world, of my soul has been able to um, help others awaken in mm -hmm. their journey. I am so passionate. It's my life calling to be my multi-life intuitive energy seer, uh, medium. <laughs> you know, I also do feng shui, house clearings and blessings because of the fact that I understand this world and the spirit world. Mm -hmm. I also interact with animals. Very, I'm an animal communicator. In other words, I talk to hawks you know, mouse, what fish, it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> I communicate with all. And with that, the, the, there's this idea of why we're on this planet and is to awaken. There is something unique about being in this human experience. Like we were just saying about how, you know, if we're connected with the star beings, you know, this, you know, there's other planets like earth Yet at the same time, this earth is unique in its human experience. And that's why a lot of us are here is to awaken and to find out who our truer self is. But we get caught up in the human experience and it, it weighs us down and it, and it tags us into certain emotions and stories and, and beings. And, and there's a lot of, the, of these stories that have been carried down through generations that are no longer ours. Right. You know? And as we were talking a little bit earlier about how religion and some of our ethnic religions or 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 um, what's the word um, stories and 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 history that we live, you know, and I'm going to name it like more the Asian culture and the East Indian culture and the that there is a, these things that are happening that our younger generation is going, why do I still have to believe this? Right. Because not everything is fitting anymore. And yet they mm -hmm. want to honor and love their culture you know, right. and what they have. And, and this is the story of our whole world is, is that we're, we're breaking free of a lot of these old paradigms or these old knowings. And you'll have to excuse my language a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm upgrading my language in my dyslexic self. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that the, the there's these these no moments of um of grace that we need to give ourselves if I can give that to you that you know how do we do this how do we live yes. our day to day because we're, uh, many of us are struggling and I can even say me even me seeing the bigger world and the seeing the bigger picture there's some days I'm like going what the heck is going on yes oh most definitely most definitely I think our society is is changing and it's changing rapidly. And, you know, we for the good and for the bad, you know, I, I think some people are getting a little, um, I guess, panicky because they see so much change. And then some people are getting influenced by media and getting the wrong ideas and, you know, reacting to those as well. 
we have, and then we have our older generation who are stuck on the old ways and they're not open to seeing the world for what it is now, mm-hmm. you know, so there's a lot going on and, and a lot to take in and you have all different generations and you have all different types of people and everybody just wants to live their life and be happy. But yet you have so many people trying to make judgment of the way life should be. But really, it's it's the what, what makes you happy as a person. And not everybody, everybody is different than one another. And everybody should be able to be their own person. We can't, there's no one set person and one set personality. And people shouldn't be so judgmental on others. You know, we have to be happy with ourselves. And a lot of times we focus on others when we're not happy with ourselves. So, you know, I think it's really important that you dive deep into yourself spiritually and understand who you are as a person and maybe cleanse that negativity from your life and cleanse, you know, your mind. So you could start seeing more clearly and understanding your intuition and working on that way and, and, and working on the life that you were meant to have, not the life that you think that you should have according to maybe people around you or the way you were raised. How do you feel about that? I feel very, I'm, I'm very much in sync with that concept of it. I also have an understand that there's a lot of things that us as humans have made choices that hinder that path. I E mm-hmm. like right now we're witnessing a lot of people who have drug addictions. So mm-hmm. how can you become more enlightened when you are addicted? You know, right. how we also have, you know, the alcoholism, food addictions, money addictions, gambling addictions that, that distract us from those parts. And for me, I, whenever I see somebody in addiction, I see like an energy around them that and I call it addiction you know, Mm -hmm. I call it an addiction. Now, for me, energy is not necessarily like people, you know, the people who go out and and go into haunted places. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. energy. But I also understand that we have emotional energy. And that can take on kind of a, a, an entity of itself, you know, a, a moment of itself. And when you have addiction, you have this energy that is attached to you that's whispering to you we like to be you know in this this spot you know aren't you feeling good about this high that you're getting you know aren't you happy with this and and when we have those energies of let's say anger frustration or whatever it is attached to us that that that's what kind of keeps us in these old stories yeah and I always talk uh, my like my emotions I always talk to, uh, to my emotions like they're friends yeah. So anger, how you feeling today? Yeah, you're feeling quite <laughs> angry. You know, what are you going to do about it? You know, I know you're not being heard lately and I've been angry about something and I've not been talking to you and I apologize. So how can I help you? You know, if we talk to our emotions like our, our friends, you know, what would our friend want us to tell? Tell us. Yeah. Tell us about ourselves. You know, how would our friend want to help us? And so taking on that energy of, of, you know, and, and if you want to break free of an addiction, if you want to break free of those moments of being, um, I'm going to call it sabotaged. Okay. Mm-hmm. That it is wise to almost make it something to talk to. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when we take it outside of ourselves, we're able to negotiate it a little bit more because that outside is us, but yet sometimes we're so used to looking outside of ourselves yeah. <laughs> that it's a good place to be. And, and I know for me, like when I was going through my grief, cause I lost my parents at the same time I was having children and, wow. you know, uh, and, and then I lost all my family in seven years on one on my mom's side of the family and being an only child, only grandchild, that was pretty impactful. And so in order to get through that grief, you know, I was struggling being in being me. I didn't even know how to be a wife, a mom or anything like that. So I had to find a way to negotiate it. So I would talk to my grief like it was somebody who was here. And when it really was needing to cry, I would have a soppy movie night. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and yeah. then, you know, and then slowly through time, through those emotions, through that knowing, I was able to bring that, that part of me more closer in and to, to work with it as an inner 
voice instead of an outer voice. But sometimes we have to go into preservation. Mm -hmm. We have to go into how can I negotiate that? And sometimes we have to take it out of ourselves so we can look at it a little differently to later when we feel more comfortable, bring it inside of ourselves. What are some techniques that you can do to to kind of go out of yourself and look at yourself instead of being in yourself and not being able to see the outside picture from the outside? Do you know so what I mean? Some of, the, some of the tools that I've practiced, and this is why I go through life is to practice some skills <laughs> to get it, it. It is basically almost thinking who at, what's going on with me. Mm-hmm. And then if, if this was a friend, what can I do? So I would almost take that. I would almost take that and almost with my hand, put it over here and then look at it. Right. You know, cause sometimes we have those emotions that stand right in front of us. Yeah. Let's say shame or anger or frustration or, or disappointment or, or, or belittling. You know, Mm -hmm. it stands right in front of us that we can't see. So if we take that to the side and look at it a little differently, we can see how, because everything of us has a positive and not so positive moment. I don't like to use the word negative because everything negative is is a positive aspect to it. Yes, it does. So so with that, that, you know, there's that, that, you know, the, the, what does it want to tell me in the positive and what does it want to tell me in the the shadow work, the, 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 oh, you know, I'm just not feeling quite good about this. You know, why did I treat that person that way? I'm right. just, why wasn't I there when my mom passed away? Why wasn't I the wise, you know, it was more that, that shadow work, the, the, the more heavier moments. Right. Yeah. And then when we get into the, the positive moments, it's, oh, that's because of, you know, and, and I couldn't have done any better because I was halfway across the world. I couldn't get home, you know, those logistic things, you know? So with that, when I, when I'm able to, to take it away and then also another tool that I use is that I say, what is this here to teach me? Mm -hmm. And so instead of, and using that mantra, what is this here to teach me? That usually gives me the tool to, instead of being the victim of the situation, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's say an argument with a spouse, you yes. know, what is this here to teach me? What are they trying to say? What are they trying to really tell me? You know, I hear I anger, I hear frustration, but what are they really trying to tell me? And yes. when, literally when we go into that, what is this here to teach me? What am I supposed to learn from this? The victimhood gets more empowered to be more witnessing, to make this a better place, right? A better moment for us. And so those are two very um, empowering tools that I have used consistently, especially that what is this here to teach me mm-hmm. that it's one of I've gotten practice that if something agitating yeah. pops up, the first thing I do is what is this here to teach me? Because that takes me out of victimhood pretty much right away, but I've practiced it. And yes. my mantra is practice to do better. We're never right. perfect but we got to practice to do better. And we're perfectly imperfect as we're doing this earthly experience. So how can Mm -hmm. I do better with it? And going there is, is, is part of it. We have to go there, wherever there is and go into it to figure what it is. And, and even like me dealing with, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, but dealing with my depression, I had, I spent money. And so I had to talk with my, my money spending as a, as an entity of when I was in a store and it was saying, bye, bye, bye. And I'm saying, "Uh, uh-uh. you know, really, we got to do different here, dude, you know, <laughs> or do mm-hmm. that, you know, we got to do different here. And, yeah. and instead of it being, you know, it's almost that, that old mantra of, a, of an angel and a devil on our yes. shoulder, but take mm-hmm. it off the shoulder and make it more of a whole being. Right. You know? And, and what would we do with a friend who, who was wanting us to drink when we didn't want to drink, we would tell it no. Right. Yes. And so how can we make those things of ourselves friends so that Mm -hmm. we can say, have a conversation with it, tell it to basically F off if we don't want to do what it's doing, you know, right. That kind of thing. And, and, you know, sometimes we have to get in that mode of, of just, you know, go out, you know, stop, you know, to, in order to stop some of these old habits that we have. 
I think that's an excellent point. Now, you know, you carry a strong sixth sense and you're very spiritual and you, you know, you have a strong intuition and you can see things, you know, yeah. you can see how it was in the past. You can see the present, you can see the future. You're able to verbalize with pe people just by, and know what, you know, has gone on in their life. Now, did you always have this ability or was this something that you acquired later on? Some people acquire it later on, all of a sudden they carry, they, they get this ability of being, being able to be a medium or being able to get messages. And some people develop it from, the, from birth, you know, it's, it's different for everybody. When did you recognize that you had this ability? I have an understanding I've had it my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like my cousin says, Natasha, we come from very intuitive family, but there's something different about you. And when you spoke, even though you were shy and quiet and you never said a word, we listened. Yeah. And then I, um, as I was growing up in school, I had a friend who was angry and I would say, what's bothering you? I know there's something bothering you. Right. Why are you depressed? Would you stop doing that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I naturally did that. So I, and I naturally was a channeler. I would hear spirits in the house. I had a guy that would walk around, you know, and peer into my room. And you know, I went to a Catholic church when I was growing up. So you know how many Hail Marys and Our Fathers I said, as I was seeing this <laughs> dude walking in, uh, you know, peering around the corner when I was growing up. And yeah, and then uh, my dad was very intuitive. And so with that, that, you know, we did come from a very intuitive family. And then as I matured and grew into being myself, after my, my mom mm -hmm. passed away, the universe basically said, it's time for you to do the work that you know you can do. And so even though I was a counselor to friends and family before my mom passed, mm -hmm. then I was able to, I went to Doreen Virtue's angel, ther angel therapy practitioner, and now she's not doing that anymore. She's had a life change, but... You know, she was the catalyst for me to to say, okay, it's time for me to do this as a profession, right? And to be a spiritual spiritual counselor and to do this work. So with that, that I've had it my whole life, kind of like I knew how to channel, but when I tried yeah. to channel, I couldn't do it because it wasn't it wasn't natural for me to try to do it. I just naturally did it, and so right. now that I've evolved and and matured into my greater self. Now everything just, I, I'm allowing that part of me that knows what to do to just be, <laughs> Right. I'm done fighting it. You know, I'm just, I, I'm at that age where it's like, eh, what the heck? I'm just going to be me. And, yeah. uh, and it's, it, it's that story of how are we negotiating this? And, and I know that not everybody can see things the way I do, but at the same same time, the difference between me and someone else is I trust that. Mm -hmm. I trust what I get fully. I practiced it my whole life. And before this, you know, it's right. like I was a, 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 a witch crone in another past life. And so when I want to, she's got all these brews, all these, you know, frog tails and toads and, you know, which is wart and all that kind of stuff on the, on the shelf. And she's in another dimension. And so when I need a, a magical brew done up, yeah. you know, my crone Stacy, who I was in a past life, she helps me with that. And right. I've known how to do that my whole life, you know, how to bring these different dimensions that are, or different lifetimes into bringing into helping me in this one. And so it's just all been natural for me. Now, yeah. how do I use that? I help others to learn how to do that and how to trust themselves. And, and like I said, the difference between me and somebody else is that it's, it's my trust. It's my, it's me. I, I can't help but me be me at the same time though. I've trusted that part of me to right. help me go through my life. And somebody else who's a little bit more, let's say coming out of alcoholism, they don't trust that part of themselves. Right. And so with that, then it's just practice to do better. 
Now, I know many people who are spiritualists and they want to enhance their spirituality. They know they have the ability to, but they don't know how to get to that next level. For those people, what would you suggest that they want to enhance their, their spirituality? Because there's many different types. They have people where they can go back into regression and they can, they can, they can see the past and they can see what they were in other lives. You have people who are telepathic, you know, that can think of things and just focus. And all of a sudden they're like, you know, so and so needs to call and then you'll get a phone and like hey how's it going and they just get a message in their head you know and then you have people who would just look at people and they can feel the presence of other people around them and they can feel and they can interpret those messages to them so how did you you know and even when you say you channeled into the light years and you can see where where people were and you know and so how did, how were you able to get yourself to such a high level where other people, you know, they want to work on themselves to get to that high level? What are some exercises or things they could do? That part of this is the dance with the ego. Mm -hmm. And I am one of those weird ones that think that my ego is my best friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That I use my ego when there's times when there is, let's say I have, you know, um, a situation in my life and my ego needs to come up and be a stronger voice than what my calm, loving self is, Right. you know, ego steps up. But I also understand my ego needs to step, sit down and be right. a part of my council, be part of my team. And so with that, that there's a lot of spiritualists, and I'm going to say this with love and kindness, that aren't very spiritual. Yeah. And no judgment here. And I have, I, I have this understanding that if I haven't done it in this lifetime, I I've done it in other lifetimes. So why should I judge? Right. So right. with that, that, that ego, you know, has a habit of sneaking up and being backward, you know, sneaking up in these ways. And so like, for me, I noticed that my ego sometimes when I'm discombobulated like there's been something that's happened in my life or um where i'm a little bit thrown off my feet yeah okay, as we say it um things got a little bit stressful and i get an intuitive note notice i get an intuitive message and instead of pausing for a moment ego steps up and goes hey i know i know what to say here i get what i'm supposed to say and this is a lesson I'm learning now is that fine tuning it. <laughs> right. The universe seems to want me to walk on the 50 yard mark. If I get over on the 49 or, or the 51, <laughs> the universe says, nah, Natasha, we're going to sneak you in a little bit closer and dial you in again. So mm -hmm. with that, the, the, you know, being that moment where, hey, I know what to say. I have to remember to stop for a second. Right. Breathe check in discern if that person's ready to hear it if i'm ready to say it right if the energy in the room is available to witness it right and to ask is this the way i'm supposed to say it discernment mm -hmm. discernment is huge when you're working with your intuitive gifts or your understandings and discernment is just as much about us as it is outwardly Yes. So you got to look at that word discernment inwardly and outwardly and, and working with that ego and, and pausing that ego in some fashion, becoming it, having it be your friend, mm -hmm. you know, the, there's a theme with me, I guess, <laughs> make yeah. everything a friend and you know what you're looking at, you know, even my yeah. enemies, uh, which I don't really have any enemies, but you know, somebody who's know. challenging me, I even make them a friend. I, you know, I can't be friends with them, but I can be friendly. So how can I yes. be friendly with them? But there's that, that thing that, you know, we have to look at all parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to, and ego is part of it. And if we want to be more spiritual inclined, if we want to be more intuitive, there's going to be things in the metaphorical back door that we got to look at. And we have right. to turn around and see who's coming through the back door. Is that shame? Is that guilt? Is that mom? Is that dad's language? Is that no yeah. offense, no, no judgment on if it is or isn't, right? Because it could be just as positive as, as not so positive, right? Yeah. And so what are those things? And, and if you can look at yourself 360 in and out, Mercury, I mean, with these planets all in retrograde right now, and they go through retrograde every year. 
Mm -hmm. So it's not a story that we don't know, but it is about going into what is this here to teach me? What is this story that I'm holding on to that isn't, that is keeping me from being more enlightened, you know? Right. And I can tell you that that is the difference between, I think that me and a lot of people is I've been willing to say, what the heck? The year that my mom passed away, I tipped that box over that I put everything in from right. being shamed, bullied, molested, everything. Tip that box over and said, okay, what does this look like? What does that look like? What is this about in my life? What is this here to teach me in my life? Being molested. You know, I had a crick in my neck because, you know, the brother was molesting me when the, when, when the younger brother walked in and witnessed it and closed the door, you know? Mm -hmm. And so me watching that, I got a crick in my neck. Okay. So now how am I going to heal the crick in my neck from having this, this moment of what the hell happened? Right. You know, as a three-year-old, four-year-old, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. So then how did that whole story need to be worked with healed so now when i when i talk to someone who's been molested it's a strength of mine yeah. because i I've, I've gotten yeah. that that story and matured it to be an experience to learn from it yes because if we stay in our stories i kind of picture stories and and experiences like in the side of a mountain right? right so either we stay in the mountain or the stay in the story and we go down the mountain into the valley and we mm -hmm. stay in the valley. We don't get any reception. We don't get any knowings. We don't get anything, right? But right. If, we, if we lift up out of the story into the experience, it was teaching me this. This is what happened to me. I'm not going back there again, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to go back there again. I'm going to go witness it maybe, but I'm not going to go back there again. Right. So then you go into the experience of it. And I'll give you an example of how to, to discern to experience out of story living with an alcoholic for most of my marriage years. Yeah. He's now 11 years sober. The story of him being an alcoholic is something that I can speak of. I'll witness it, but I can tell you that experience taught me. I'm not going back there again. If he right. starts drinking again, I'm going to have to really discern if I'm going to stay with him. Right. I may give him a chance to get healed again. But yet that's up to that's up to his journey. If he's going down that rabbit hole, I'm not going with him. So there again right. is that story. I'm not going back down the story again of being the victim, but I'm going to have the experience of saying, you know what? I learned a lesson. I learned some experiences. I'm stronger now. I know how to do different. I'm going to do different. So I'm willing to go up the mountain to experience and yes. gain more experiences. So if that kind of gives an idea on how to negotiate coming from our story of victim into experience of wisdom yeah and I, I think that is very helpful because i we also have we have some of the topics that are really big is addiction on our show and also sexual abuse that is a very big topic also many people have experienced sexual abuse and when we did topics on that um we had a lot of people come on to listen because they still had the trauma and the memories really pulling them down. And some of them, you know, we have people who came on and talked about how they overcame them, but there's so many people out there that hold that, that pain within them and hold those memories. And they have such a hard time letting go and it just pulls them down and they can't rise above the chaos and they can't move forward in life because that one instance or those, those several instances mm -hmm. just, just has like a rope on them and keeps pulling them backwards into the past. And I think it's so important how to let go of that past and how to learn how to, like you said, go up the hill and to be able to connect. And and I want to honor those people because sometimes we can't let go of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't, we can't forgive it. Right. We can't go back and say, oh, you know, but I can tell you though, that there's, there's something that we can become better out of it. Mm -hmm. And this is where I don't necessarily let, let go of things. I transform them. Yes. I trans transform them into a different story. And for me that sometimes our mind likes to keep hold of the old story. And so yeah. we have to disrupt the disruptor. So yes. if our disruptor likes us to stay in that old story of victim, I have to find some way 
to to release myself of that old story. And so I have this mantra that I say, I'm asking for divine healing on this. Yes. So when my mind wants to go to that old story, I go, I'm asking for divine healing on this. So that I've practiced to disrupt the disruptor because the right. only way we can get out a story is to create a new story. I like that. I like you know? that. And, and it's not to dishonor that. I mean, there's things that my husband did in his alcoholic years that I can't forgive. Right. But I can be better from it. Mm -hmm. I can be better from it. Right. And I can tell you, I'm not going to go back there again. Mm -hmm. So if that scenario ever comes back again, and I'm going to call them dry drunks, <laughs> <Yeah>. mm -hmm. <laughs> that I'm going to say, F this. Yes. I'm done with this story. I'm asking right. for divine healing on this. Right. Because I'm not going to go back there. And so to honor people for what they're going through, because there is hell that some people have gone through. We all have something that we've had to negotiate. Oh, definitely. We all have. But how do we create a, a um, understanding story out of the pain? Yeah. You know, it doesn't necessarily that it needs to be bubbles and oranges and, 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 and flowers. Yes. But it's an understandable story that I'm going to, I'm going to love something in spite of it. Yes. I'm going to love who I am in spite of it. Mm -hmm. And the, sometimes we have to disrupt the disruptor, the old pattern by saying something like I'm asking for divine healing on this. And I can tell you saying that mantra, I've seen mm -hmm. miracles with it. I like that, you know, and I, you know, I myself have gone through so much pain in my life. And then there have, there has been times when I just looked up to the heavens and I said, okay, if you, if you're trying to make me a stronger person, you've accomplished it. I say, if you're trying to give me experiences, I got it. If you're trying to give me wisdom, I have it. I said, how about we like slow down and put me on a different pathway because I can't get any stronger than I am. And <laughs> I'm done. I'm cooked. I'm over I'm it. Done. I'm cooked everything well done good you know it's like okay you know it's like you made your point you told me everything i need to know let's start something new please you know and then, i get that i know there was a time when my mom had the disease at the same time that my i had a child who was uh five months old and then at the same time uh I had a four-year-old and then my husband was changing jobs in that same year. And, yeah. and it was like, I said, okay, God, as I choose to call it my higher power, yeah. um, you know, if you put my feet on the ground, I'll walk my day. And then halfway yeah. through the day, I went, frick, you put my feet on the ground. I don't remember what I just did. But I know what I'm <laughs> doing. You know, it's like, sometimes we're just there and we, we don't know what to do. But I can tell you that... It almost makes me want to cry. We all have support. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Mm -hmm. We all have kindness around us. We all have something. And you know, what's so sad is, is that so many of us come into this world with a journey of our soul. Yes. And then it had a human experience of somebody else's story and it yeah. screwed us up. Yeah. But we have to, in some way, find a way out of it. Yes. And and it doesn't mean that it's 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 not going to hurt it. It's still, I mean, there's times yeah. where, um, let's say, there's something that happens, and I go slip back right back to me being three year, four years old, being molested. But I right. have to kind of say that was then. This is now. That was right. then. This is now. There yes. again is another another mantra I used for survival. Right. This is that mm -hmm. was then. This is now. Right. You know, disrupt the disruptor, the one yes. that wants us to stay in our old de demeaning story. Yeah. And many of us who have been in victimhood because of scenario, not saying victimhood is, is something I'm going to uh, judge. It's not. Right. It's part of the journey. We are in victimhood through some of our story. Grief has yeah. victimhood in it. Grief yeah. has anger in it. So with that, that we all have these journeys, but if we stay in victimhood too long, then it becomes detrimental in our life. Oh yeah. It and, becomes normalized. We have to normalize it. Yes. And, and, and become, if it's just okay, 
But there's so many times when we got victimhood from scenarios that like, let's say if we were molested from an uncle and our parents didn't acknowledge it. Well, there's a theme in that family of, of shame and, and la, 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 la. I don't see, I don't hear, I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? And then we carry that with us in addition to being molested. Yeah. And we have to find some way to negotiate that. Mm -hmm. Get our way through it, get our way above it, go into, go into it so we can go past it. There's been so many times I've been in pain that if I just went through it, it got easier because if I stand right here on the doorway and not wanting to go through it, it was more painful. And half the pain is going through the, is just before you go through the door, (laughs) just before you, that just before we lose it all, but be safe when you got to lose it all. You know, yes. there's been mm-hmm. many times I got on the floor and I cried my heart out, but I was in a safe place to do it. Right. Right. Because I had to go through that door. Mm-hmm. I had to, because that was the only way I was going to become me. My right. truer me was to go through that door. So basically what you're saying is we have to face the problem and we have to let go of all those repressed emotions. It seems like you're saying, and just keep moving forward. And realizing that the past is the past and we can't change the past. And when we encounter painful moments, we have to really just face them and and just go through it and take, pull something positive out of it and keep moving. Exactly. Exactly. If you had a friend that was going through a horrible past moment, what would you do with it? What would you do with them? If they were a best friend, you'd probably hold them. Yes, I would comfort them. Comfort them. Do that for yourself. Yeah. Be your own best friend. I think that's what so many people lack is that they don't know how to be their own best friend. And I think if we learn to love ourselves and comfort ourselves, we could probably get through a lot if Mm we, and I think that goes into taking care of ourselves, really. I call that the healthy eye. Mm -hmm. the healthy eye the one that says i i mean i is capitalized for a reason right i am important i need Mm -hmm. to be capitalized i need to take care of me i tell the students that i'm with you know that's why i always make that point i is capitalized because i am important (laughs) i like that i like that and and then but then at the same time we need to be the we you know yeah but we have to be the healthy i to be the healthy we So we have to look at ourselves and have those, I want to call them selfish, more selfish moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Better ourselves, but do with boundaries, you know, like for me right now, it's healthy for me to be on a show with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. At the same time though, my husband came home and now he's doing his thing, but I told him with a healthy eye, honey, you know, we got delayed on the show and I'm still going to do it. Right. And so there's that healthy eye. Now I'm going to have a healthy we by later making sure that we have a moment to yes. appreciate each other and to 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 understand each other and what each other had to do that for that day, right? Yeah. And so there's the healthy eye with the healthy we. Right. Exactly. Exactly. To give a metaphor for how to apply that eye understanding. <laughs> Well, it's, it's about, it's about not always taken, but given back is the message you're, you're trying to expel is just, you know, we, you know, one thing happens, but you know, you take, you do, so you have to do things a certain way, but in a set, in a second sense, you give back, you know, if, if it's, in, if it entails somebody in your life, you know, you make one sacrifice, but then you show gratitude by mm-hmm. doing the we, doing the we, doing the we. And that's, that's the, if I can give anybody anything is that hope that there is times when we can survive it. Yeah. But we're going to have to survive it because in spite of it. Yeah. You know, we have to, we have to find that part of us that's willing to say, you know what, mm-hmm. that was an, uh, that was an <laughs> moment, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time though. I'm worthy of being here with this life now. Yeah. 
and I'm going to do it in spite of it. Right. I like yeah. that. You our know, it's bodies not... need to, our bodies need to, to negotiate that pain and that shame and that hurt. Yes, it does. It does. You know? But how do we negotiate that? I know for me that I've been on a journey the last couple uh, years about, you know, I was in fear and flight for so long being married to an alcoholic, mm -hmm. not his fault. I chose, right. Yes. <laughs> but the emotions. cause and effect was that I was yeah. in fear and flight for a lot of those years. And then yeah. having two kids at the same time that my parents were passing away, I was pregnant with my, um, my first child, uh, uh, my dad died six weeks before my first child was born. And then three weeks after my second child was born, I found out my mom had Lou Gehrig's disease. Wow. And that was three years in, in between my, my adrenals and my, and my light, my organs basically said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and now 20 years later, 30 years later, my body say, my body was starting to say, Hey, you know, we're cooked. We're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have a hard time getting through emotions because there's something that is not right in their bodies, their yeah. adrenals. And if you know anything about cars, I picture adrenals kind of like being the alternator of the car. It's right. the thing that triggers the battery to start. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your trigger to start, you don't start your day well. And right. I was lethargic. I was not motivated. I was, I was pretty much emotionally compromised. Right, right. Because my adrenals were off, my thyroid was off, my pituitary gland was off, my my uh, liver was off, my gallbladder. You know, it's that domino yeah. effect. Right. And we have to understand our bodies when we're when we've gone through some life altering moments. Right. A hundred percent. You know. Hundred percent. I think we have to listen. I think our bodies are always giving us messages. I think the problem is not everybody listens to what their body is trying to tell them. And I, I had one conversation. It was so interesting. I had one conversation and she was in, um, she was in, uh, acrobatic, um, uh, health and she, she, um, and when we talked about my, my, my pain in my shoulders, she's like, you're, you have too much on your shoulders and your body is trying to tell you. And, uh, you know, and I thought for a second, I'm like, you know what, there's reasons why I have the shoulder pain, but, you know, I do have a lot going on and I do need to release some of that, you know, and I think when we do release the stress in our lives, we do feel enlightened. We do feel lighter as a person. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you about past aggression because I, I love the topic past aggression and yes. you know, it's funny because when I would do the angel cards and I would do, I would always get the, let's say the last 10 times I did the angel cards, I got the same cards each time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it would be like past, present, future, and the same cards used to always come up. And it was more like they were trying to give me the message and say, this is what it is. Wake up, you know, and, you yes. know, this is who you are and this is what you need to do. And, uh, when you want to contact and you want to get in and, and understand your past in your, in your, in your previous lives, what's a great exercise or maybe some tips that you could tell people who are interested in past regression, what they could do to actually, to learn more about what happened in their previous lives. So maybe it could, it, cause I think when we understand what happened in our previous lives, it helps us understand why we are the way we are, who we are, and then what we can do in the, in the present moment to help us now while we're here on earth. Okay. So not everybody is able to go there because yeah. it is about working with understanding different dimensions. It's kind of like working with the matrix system. Not yes. everybody even has that understanding of that, that there's something other. I mean, right here is somebody else, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to have that grace first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to understand that and 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 acceptance is a huge, yeah. huge part of that accepting that there's something greater than us yeah a lot of times our dreams are our past lives trying to speak to us yeah. and many of us discount that especially when we were yeah. younger mm -hmm. and so like for me i had a dream where i was coming out uh, like i was um, in the dakotas 
Right. And I came out, I had two kids to the side and I came out and there was um, four or five um, braves on horseback. Right. And I knew my, my guy was off getting cattle. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's yeah. a part of me also, when I checked in with that intuitively, cause I've been intuitive past lives that I knew that he took off on me and he wasn't coming back. Right. So as I was standing here with the babes, I knew that I had to either be or die. Right. I didn't die. They actually honored the warrior woman that I was mm -hmm. in that life. But that was a dream I woke up with. I mean, that I had all through childhood. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of dreams that we have, especially if we're on the intuitive side that come in and that is part of our past lives. Now, the one thing that I understand about past lives is that the ones we have, many of us have so many of them, the ones that are relevant for this time are the ones that we see mm -hmm. or we have dreams about. Right. Okay. So if we're going through something, let's say if we get triggered by a noise, yeah, and then we wake up in anxiety of of having a something going on in the um, in a building somewhere. Right? Yeah, we have mm -hmm. a dream that we can't get out of a building. Right. Okay. So then think about that as a possible past life mm -hmm. about that noise and ha and going off at the same time. Oh, right. okay. So now I have an understanding that there was something that was happening in my life. At that time when a noise was going off. Okay, so I know that that noise isn't about this time, lifetime. It's right. just something that happened in the past life. So if we kind of accept our dreams, our, our daydreams right. that pop in. Yeah. With a little bit more grace and understanding that hmm, that's a possible past life. Right or wrong? Right. I don't know. I'm not looking for right or wrong right now. I just am witnessing it as an, a possibility. Right. That's how you start tuning into it. Right. Because I have an understanding. Everything that in my world that I witness is a mm -hmm. possibility of a truth. Right. Now, I understand that everything is a lowercase t, truth. It is. It isn't. Your truth is my, not my truth. Truth is truth. The only one that is capital T R. U T H all the way through is divine love. Right. That is the only thing that I know is, is, is the truth of all truths. Mm -hmm. The thing is though, understanding that, that, you know, our dreams, our daydreams are possibility of a truth that yeah. is popping up. And what are we going to do with it? Right. Okay. I have a little different understanding now, or if you're seeing ants, and you're scared of ants and all of a sudden mm -hmm. something pops in of being, you know, buried alive. Right. Oh, there's a possibility. Now I kind of understand that it's not necessarily in this lifetime. It's probably yeah. in another lifetime. So it's more accepting these ebb and flow things that pop up into our lives. Right. Of, of a journey. And, and sometimes we, and we're so quick to judge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, discount it. Huh, that's not, a, no, take it as a possibility. Right. People don't have to know what's going on in your brain. We don't have yeah. to advertise to everybody. So if you have things going off in your brain, keep it there. Let, right. let your own truths mingle. Right. Not everybody needs to know what you're thinking. Exactly. So don't hold shame and guilt for your, or, or, you know, disbelief for yourself because it's like, Oh, somebody's not going to like what I'm thinking. Who cares? They don't need to know. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. Very true. You know, Very practice, true. practice witnessing your life, practice witnessing your life. And like I said, not everybody needs to know that what you're practicing. If everybody knew what was going off in this world, they would put me in a saying, I do <laughs> Do you, do you suggest maybe making a journal? Is that good? When, when people are trying to connect if with this writer, mm -hmm. if you're a writer, I know not everybody's a writer. Um, mm -hmm. that's where, if you want to, like the, the phone has like a, a, an app that you can right. use for writing, um, you know, do something that would make it easier. I know for me, writing is not the first thing I go to, but yet at the same time, I, I try to put notes down and it mm -hmm. is good to get it out of your head. You know? Right. 
there again, you don't have to show anybody. Right. It's that night side bed. You know, what are you dreaming about? What do you, what do you, when you're waking up, what is the thing that that's popping in your head? Because I can can let you know that the things that pop in your head are usually the universe trying to speak to you. Right. Right. I like that because a a lot of times too, I would get recurrent dreams over and over again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would feel like I was flying in the air. Like it would be like such an immense feeling. And and then I would feel then it's, it was like, I didn't want it to stop. And then all of a sudden I felt myself go back into my body and I, I woke, you know, but it was like, you know, I, and I would always get like, you know, if I talked to the universe, I always got an answer mm-hmm. and, you know, it came in all different ways and um, some through visions, some through smell, some through just symbolizations of things you know, and sometimes just people speaking to me in my dreams. So it's like, you know, I truly believe that we are, you know, there, we, our world just taps into a light. you know, uh, there's so much more out there, you know, it's just that. And then when people say things and they're skeptical, it's like, we only use 10% of our brain. And can mm-hmm. you imagine if, if we had the capabilities in on earth to use more than just 10%, what's old, what's the other 90%, you know, what would, what would we be capable if we had, you know, access to more than just 10% of our brain, you know, and things would change. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I want people to understand that don't worry about timelines. Mm -hmm. If something is happening and it's like yesterday type of timeline, don't attach yourself to timelines. Yes. If you have a knowing witness the knowing but be free of of tapping into the timelines because time is actually changing and Mm -hmm. dimensions are changing right things are happening around us there again is the matrix idea Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) you know so with that you know be open but yeah good job being you because it's like that is part of our journey is witnessing it. And I want to add in you getting your witnessings and stuff, add in animal communication. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we get those crows that fly down in front of our car. We yes. sometimes get the deer that walks in front of us or the rabbit or the cat that comes and says, funk, sit down. You are sitting yeah. down right now. What mm-hmm. is it that the cat wants to tell you? Oh, right. the crow realigns my heart. Okay. Thank you. Relines my breathing. You know, so the, yeah. there's certain reasons why, you know, the, the universe is going to talk to us in many different ways. And it's waking up the veil, the cliche word veil is thinning like mm-hmm. no tomorrow. Uh, and it's, it, it's really becoming a wonderful thing. So many had... of us are getting these feelings and we don't know what to do with them. And it's, no. Our, it's called kind of settling ourselves into going, oh, my two intuition is waking up. Yeah. And, you know, I feel, I feel bad for people who don't really open themselves up to, and they're skeptical because there's so much more out there. And just by opening yourself up, you know, you can learn so much about yourself. And it also, I think, heals the healing process, you know, in life, the journeys we go through, the obstacles that occur, I think by having connections with your sixth sense and, and being spiritual really takes you to a different level and helps that, that healing process, you know, kind of, uh, move a little quicker and you learn from it. Like you said, you really, everything that happens, you, you really get a positive effect out of it as well. So it's really, it's really a, a wonderful thing when you can actually, you know, connect with your spirituality. Now you have a website. Tell me a little about your website and tell the people what you offer, the services you offer. So I'd really like to hear a little about that. Okay. So my website is angelicclarifications.com. And I mm-hmm. want to add on a, a real quick, that word that to finish off, you're saying that, you know, going into that knowing and understanding, and it's all coming back to trust again. Yes. Mm-hmm. All coming back to trust again. Okay. I had to get that out. Sorry. <laughs> so my website is angelicclarifications.com. I s- allow, I have many different services that I do. My dad was a multi or he can do multi things. And I kind of came by that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so I do my mediumship. I love to support group mediumship. 
Yeah. Uh, one time I had 10 women in a room and seven of them had lost children. And I hold such a loving kindness that people go, how did you do that? And I go, it's my calling. I, 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 I'm grateful to be able to do that. You know? Yeah. So I do mediumship either personally or in group. I also have a, uh, I do uh, just normal everyday spiritual counseling sessions. Mm -hmm. I help support grief management and um, visiting your loved ones in that way. I also have a, uh, a session that I do DNA and yeah. past life healing. Oh, nice. Yes. So what I do is I put you in a, I, we do a little bit of a, of a session and then I put you into a meditative state, go into your heart, and then we go back through time. And then we go to a time in the DNA life of your family where there was either shame, guilt, or, or something that has happened. Like one of them, um, it was about fam, fam, famine over in Europe and all the, the hay fields were dry. And so there was that lack of, and so right. what we did was we brought that, we changed that energy, shifted it up. And it's not necessarily that we change experiences, but mm -hmm. we have a different perception on those experiences as we come through back up in time. Right. And then mm -hmm. we carry that into our life. So we have a possible healing into our lifetime. And then as we're doing that, I go back into past lives and, and go in and ask for divine healing on some of those past lives that had some of the same scenarios to help right. the person move through. And I've had some people say, oh my gosh, Natasha, I, I went and visited my family and everybody was like, ah. <laughs> they just came down just a little bit. You know, yeah. there wasn't so reactions. There wasn't so many, there was, it, it was a gift to be with people finally again. Right, right. So it, there's a, like I said, possible healing with the energies around us. And mm -hmm. then uh, I um, also have a few classes that if you want to learn how to be more intuitive or, you know, the, I do have multi sessions where we can go in. If you want to do some, you know, work through your shame or work through some of these um, scenarios that are in life that I find that if we can go like every three weeks that we yeah. start breaking or breaking down old patterns to enlighten ourselves to a better self and, and do that. And so I have some discounts on multi sessions to do that with. I also do feng shui and mm -hmm. house clearings and blessings, and I can do it virtually, or I can do it over, uh, or I can do it in person. I'm in the Northwest here, um, mm -hmm. close to the Canadian border. So with that, that, uh, you know, I, I can do, I, I'm an energy seer. Mm -hmm. So I see energies around rooms. I see energies of the ley lines of, of property and, and feng shui. I, I call myself a practical feng shuiist. I'm not yeah. a minimalist by any means, but I have purpose. And so yeah. how can I help you have better purpose, more flow in your room or your right. life? I love it. I love it. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. And then you add in a little bit of Akashic records and animal communicator, medical intuitive, you know, it's that, that whole gamut of, of whatever is called for that pops up. Right. I call myself, I have a tool belt and I turn that tool belt <laughs> and I need to do for the person. <laughs> but I hold no judgment. Like I said, that if I haven't done it in this lifetime, I've done it in others. And so if I've already done it, why should I judge you for what you're going through? Right. Exactly. I like I that. Love. I hold love and divine love for people. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So tell everybody before we go, just one more time, tell them your website so they, they know where to go. Okay. Um, angelicclarifications.com. I also have a new podcast coming out. It's Wednesday oh. on my YouTube channel, Facebook and Twitter, and sometimes on Instagram. It's called Every Day with an Angel. And I'm Excellent. so excited that this just came to me. It's um, every Wednesday at four o'clock Pacific time live, or you can catch it on my YouTube channel. I have over 500 videos on my YouTube channel of different sorts. So with oh, that, wonderful. I have a lot of two minute videos and then I've had my previous podcasts. I love it. I'm very excited to see this. Yeah. Oh, and I'm congratulations. Hoping to have you on my show too. <laughs> I would love to be on your show. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed this time and I know a lot of people are going to benefit from this. So thank you so much. It's been such thank a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I, I'm so forever grateful. Oh, same here. I'm so glad to have you as my guest. Thank you have a great day. You too.